Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, and I am here with my friend Amy Shiratitle. Hi, Amy. Hi, Trace. Over the next hour, we're going to dig super deep into the science of breasts, boobies, mammaries, breastuses. Whatever you want to call them. Yeah. We're going to talk about them. Now, make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes this series. We're going to have five episodes all about breasts. You can also find this series as one episode over on iTunes. You can check the description for the link for that. We're going to talk about how breasts work, why we love them, and why it's important to understand breast cancer, breastfeeding, and even breasts throughout history. It's going to be a super cool series. So make sure you stick around. Subscribe for that. But first, when it comes to breasts, a lot of people talk about, I don't know, how we have them. But so do all mammals. Like, breasts aren't a thing that only we have. Yeah, every every mammal has breasts, and every mammal has multiple breasts, and that's because we have bilateral symmetry. We have two eyes, two arms, two legs, two breasts, and a lot of this comes down to the fact um, it's related to how many children we have. Mm. Humans typically have one child, right. which means that when a human mother lifts a baby up to breastfeed, she has two options. Right. Whereas dogs have multiple rows of nipples between right. four to eight, and you know, we all know puppies come in litters. Yeah, so, so dogs will have six to ten nipples because they have four to eight pups, and they want to make sure that they have enough nipples for each breastfeeding pup. And inside of a breast, it's different for obviously for animals, but just to say that human breasts are not that different from other animal kingdom breasts. It's from a medical standpoint, the breast contains fatty tissues, it contains lactating glands, which are called lobules, it contains milk ducts, it contains collagen, and it contains skin. They're basically like skin bags filled with a variety of different glands and fatty tissues that sit on the front of our bodies. And we need for feeding. Yeah. That's that is the reason we have breasts. That's right. The, and you know, there's sexual dimorphism, however, and that's really what it comes down to when it comes to society. For human society, sexual dimorphism is very important because women have breasts and usually men do not. Men have more flat chests. And human women are the only ones who are busty all the time. Primates don't do that. Which is interesting because I I would have thought that it is, a you know, all primates have very similar things, but I would not have thought that it would just be women who are swollen all the time. Yeah, it's very strange. And scientists don't really know exactly why human women have swollen breasts all the time. And primates usually only swell when they're nursing. Uh, and scientists think that it has to do with attracting a mate and showing that the breasts are filled with milk and it's a sign of fertility, et cetera, et cetera. You know, higher chances of reproductive success. So perhaps human women are trying to show that they're fertile all the time. I mean, we don't really know. It's just a theory, but right. perhaps that's what it is. The idea of attracting the mate. And it's men don't have to do that. Yeah. Men don't have that secondary characteristic that they're always displaying to try to attract a female to say, I am trustworthy. I want you to bear my children because I, I should be the one to fill you with babies. Right. It's very different evolutionarily why women should be and would be kind of displaying this stuff for to find a mate. Right. And when it comes back to breasts, it, it often comes back to breast size, which varies right. based on genetics. You know, more fat equals larger breasts. The glands themselves, like the milk ducts, they're not necessarily more milk ducts in a larger breast. I mean, there's more in terms of getting to where they need to go, but it's really the fat cells that are different in size and, and shape. So 44% of American women are a B cup, 28% are a C cup. So that's most common sizes, and that's considered fairly average. Less than 1% are D cup and larger which is pretty interesting because a lot of times when you see television shows or hear about it in, in like in a pornography, which is, you know, essentially sex theater, right. uh, which right. we've talked about here on Test 2 Plus, make sure you check out those, uh, that series as well. Um, you know, that's the D cup is like that's what you're the standard. We you're showcase to talk the D cups. Yeah, it's for some always reason. The, I don't know why. The the beautiful busty woman is always the D cup right. as opposed I don't know to why the that is, but much more average standard B cup. Yeah. Genetics aren't the only thing that go into breasts and breast size because over time breasts are going to change and it's nature is giving you the genetics of your breast but nurture or you know over time you're going to change things. So. Right. So there are, there are things that will affect your breast elasticity, the, the collagen in the breast tissue that makes them perkier when you're young. Um, as you age that collagen breaks down and your breasts do sag. Having a baby can also affect that. Um, it's I mean, breasts are like all the tissue in your body. There's the collagen, the elastin that breaks down. But the problem, I mean, 
the problem with breasts is that the breast tissue ages th two or three times faster than the tissue in the rest mm. of your body, which means that your your body can be young, but your breast tissue can be older, and you can start having that sort of sag earlier. Yeah, that little effect of gravity there. Yeah, um, yeah. But a 2008 study published in the Aesthetic Surgery Journal says that breastfeeding isn't actually a factor that affects breast sagging at all. Hmm. Another misconception is actually that wearing a bra prevents sagging. So because you're supporting right, it. Right, you know, you're supporting you're, you're the tissue. You're keeping it up so you don't have as much of a degradation and therefore you don't sag as much. Right. But that's not that's, true? That's not true. Oh. There is stress on the breast tissue all the time anyways, and it gets worse if you're not wearing the right bra. A French study says that many bras actually damage the breast's natural supportive tissue. Because they're not the right size, or they're not the right shape for your body. Yeah. And if, that's very difficult. If you have the wrong support, it can actually damage the tissue, and you can have more sagging. So it is really important for women to get sized regularly and treat themselves to new bras. Right. There are all sorts of really cool studies and ways to find out breast sizes and it, it, I mean humans are all different sizes so and there shapes. is no one size for any one person and in fact if your band size changes your cup size will also change which yeah. I found super interesting and I learned at a recent nerd night talk here huh. in San Francisco is really awesome very neat um, Michael Edwards is a breast surgeon and is the president of the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery and he listed a number of different things that contribute to breast sagging as well including uh, weight fluctuation you know uh, you have too much weight gain, it can sag your boobs more than it would have normally. Which also changes your band size, which yeah. would affect the size of your bra. Which would then increase the sag if you're yep. wearing the wrong size bra. Smoking also increases uh, chances of breast aging in general, which breaks down the collagen because it decreases the blood supply right. to the skin. It actually ages your whole all of skin, you. which is all like all bad. <laughs> UV rays damage breasts, high impact workouts can damage breasts. And that's actually one that I think is very interesting because most women with larger cup sizes have problems with things like working out. Many women, one in five in fact, according right. to the Journal of Physical Activity and Health says that uh, they have problems with workouts because of the large cup size yeah. that they have to you know, towed around during while yeah. running. It's not easy to do. It's not. And it's not just large-breasted women. Apparently, women with all breast sizes have some trouble finding a sports bra that works and have some, some issues working out with breasts. Hmm. A 2012 study in the journal BMC Medical Genetics found that there is actually seven genetic markers responsible for breast size. They're called SNPs. And those markers can be linked to a number of other things, not just breast size, but also breast cancer. Two of those seven are linked to normal breast growth and breast cancer. This is very clear. I just want to make this very clear. Bigger breasts does not mean more cancer risk. The cancer risk is the same regardless of how big breasts you have or breasts really at all in terms of like right. developed ones. Because men don't have developed breasts, but men can still get breast cancer. It's not as common, but it does happen. So guys, you should feel your boobs too, because men have breasts, and not just in the jokey way that you see in comedies. Literally, men have breast tissue. It's a serious thing, and we're going to talk more about male breasts tomorrow. Yep. So make sure you come back to Test Tube Plus. Subscribe so you get all of our episodes. Come follow us on Twitter. You can find Amy at AST Vintage Space. You can find me at Trace Dominguez. Come ask us questions. Breasts or otherwise, you know, science stuff is good. Yeah. That's pretty good. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.